Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, we're gonna be talking about the integral data types. It's gonna be lots of fun, Oh yeah. So make sure you watch the previous video if you want the conceptual stuff regarding the integral data types. This video is hands-on, we're gonna go through some examples, whatever works best for you, but either way, let's get started. But first, you gotta check out our sponsor, Embarcadero C++ Builder, Community Edition. Yes, they have a free version that you can go download right now. So what the heck is C++ Builder? It's an IDE that gives you everything you need to build C++ applications to deploy cross-platform. So yes, Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. So definitely a lot cooler than the junk we're doing here. <laughs> the Community Edition comes with a core editor, powerful debugging tools, built-in access to popular databases, Bluetooth and IoT capabilities, and a visual UI designer. Yes, all of that is free. If that doesn't sound enticing, I don't know what's wrong with you, but <laughs> go check it out anyways. The link will be in the description. All right, so where do we even get started? Well, let's start with the int that we know. We can create an integer variable like so. Right now we're assigning five to this, but what if we do something like this? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see what happens. And you can see we get an implicit conversion from unsigned long long, which is a different data type than int. So you can see that there's more to just integers than int. There are different data types that are also integral types, one of which is a long long, and we're gonna discuss the different options. And if we scroll up a little bit, you can see integer literal is too large to be represented in any integer type. So even the long long cannot store this much junk. So let's shorten this out a little bit. And now let's try compiling. Now you can see we only get the warning, which is an implicit conversion from long to int. So what are our options exactly? We have int. We also have another one, which is called short. We're going to call that a, then we have int, then we have long, and then we have long long. These are the four primary integral data types. Now each one of these is going to have an unsigned counterpart. So we can say unsigned short, unsigned int, unsigned long, and unsigned long long. So there are eight integral data types you need to know about. Now the differences between these four and these four, as we discussed in the previous video, is that the unsigned ones only allow positive values. If you need only positive values, you can extend the total max value by using an unsigned version of the data types. The difference between each one of these is about the amount of memory that is allocated for each one of these. Int is at least 16 bits, but usually 32. Long is at least 32 bits. And a long long is at least 64 bits. And when I say at least, it kind of implies that it could go pretty high. So the way it kind of works is short is less than or equal to int, which is less than or equal to long, which is less than or equal to long long. Now, how exactly do we figure out how much memory each one of these has? So we can see out and say size of, and we can use short for example, like so. Make sure you prefix it with standard or use the appropriate using at the top. I'm gonna to prefix it here. And now when we run it, we get two. So this is in bytes. A byte is eight bits, so this is actually 16 bits. We can do the same thing for int long and long long. So you can see an int is 32 bits, a long is 64 bits, and a long long is 64 bits as well. Just because your system gives it these amounts doesn't necessarily mean you can trust any system to do that. So always make sure you focus on the minimum when you're developing apps. So for example, if you're guaranteed that you're gonna need a 32-bit number, you're probably going to want to use long rather than int. That's because int is only guaranteed to be at least 16, not 32. But how do you actually know how much you can store in these different memory sizes? Well, that is actually very easy to do. We actually have to go up to the top and include another file, and that is called C limits. Make sure you spell things right, okay? Like we're not in kindergarten, Caleb. All right, then go down to the bottom, and what we're gonna do is we're going to replace this size of here, and then just say, for example, short underscore max, but there's actually no vowel here, so it's S-H-R-T underscore max. And we run this we get 32767. This is a signed number, so there's also a negative maximum. So what we can do is we could say short min, and that's gonna give us the negative. So you can see here we get all the way down to negative 32,768. Now if you wanted to see the unsigned version, just prefix it with a U, and then we could say max here. And you can see this is going to extend the maximum value. 
65535. Just like there's a short version, there is an int version, there is a long version, and then there is a long, long version. You can prefix each one of those with the U to get the unsigned version. So if you wanted to see what the unsigned long, long version would be, we can run this and we get this huge massive number which is probably large enough to basically carry anything you would ever need. Unless it's like my number of subscribers or something. That's all I got for the integral data types. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about the char data type. Very similar to the integral data types, but it's ultimately designed for characters. Check it out, it's gonna be sweet. I'll see you then, guys.